Timmy Joe reviews anything. Reviewing computer parts on YouTube. That's Woo! You gotta be pumped on that, right? Well, computer parts! Woo! Oh, yeah. Yeah! What's up, my friends? We got B450. Woo! Finally. And, woo, brand new Ryzen I haven't played with before. 2600. Okay, we've got a little thing. We're going to put it on the test bench. We'll look at this motherboard today, sent over by the Gigabyte. I'm Timmy Joe. I make videos about computers on the internet. This looks like a load of the fun. Ooh, let's zoom her in. Woo, there we go. So, there we go. We have uh, what is, looks like a beautiful B450 motherboard. Uh, I am rocking in my current Ryzen system the Ultra Super Gaming X470 Ultra, uh, which would this would be its like baby brother, because it has kind of the same, not really VRM kind of dealy going on, as well as uh, it has basically all the bells and whistles on the B450 platform, so it's not too too expensive. So what else comes in the box? Well, what I like about this so far. Got this built right on there. No plate to worry about. We have Wi-Fi built in. We have uh, some HDMI outs, so you can use this with an APU and get some ultra massive cool stuff going on. And then, in the box, I already stole the SATA cables. This comes with a, their famous Wi-Fi antenna, huh? Famous. It's got a little guitar pick, because, you know, me, 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 because it's me and I. And uh, it's got, the little connector that I really like that allows you to plug all your front panel stuff, your switches and your buttons and your lights uh, into this and then you plug it onto the board as well as some screws for your NVMe drives and oh, don't forget about that. Uh, yeah, but it's got a manual. It's fun. So, no compromises it says. It says, I will leave that in that. Put this back in there. Um, I would say for B450, there's not a lot of compromises taken. It's advertising an 8 plus 3 VRM, and I'm sad to inform you, it's probably more like a 4, because there's a doubler in there, and uh, we're going to see how far she overclocks. I'm interested to see uh, what the 2600 does, just with the XFR 2.0 that's on this thing, the, uh, what's it called, XFR 2 Enhanced Precision Boost. And all that stuff. There's also Store MI on this apparently, which is a technology that allows you to use an NVMe drive uh, as like uh, an accelerator drive for your things and stuff. So that's fun. So we're gonna get things going. We're gonna put this on here. We're gonna put this on there. We're gonna build a little system on the test bench, and then I want to see. Uh, well, you know what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna overclock it. And we got the Castle Crazy uh, 280 mil uh, freaking AIO on the bench. So let's just get to it. Alright, we're back. We're finally, we're getting her done. It's all set up and I'm sort of, sort of kind of impressed. Mostly with the Ryzen chip I got, but uh, the motherboard, it's good and it's got to be caveat. You love caviar, don't you? Caveats. So she's running Cinebench right now at 4.3 gigahertz. Oh my goodness. That's awesome considering this thing's only supposed to turbo up to 3.9. And we get uh, 1473 in the old Cinebench. Not bad at all. I'm really impressed with that. Well, I'd love to actually be impressed with that, but there's a problem. So temperatures aren't that big a concern. Uh, during the Cinebench, when I got to 66 degrees, that's, the, you know, if you're in the 80s in Cinebench, then you know you have a problem. I have a very good AIO liquid cooler from Gamer Storm on here, 280. Uh, you know, the, the temperatures are low for a reason, but they're also low because look at the V-Core. Okay, uh, I have it manually set the only way you can in the BIOS, which we will look at in a second. And the max it got to is 1.36. 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.3, 1.
six eight. Okay, that's with the maximum offset you can uh, play around with. That's really low for 4.3 gigahertz. I'm very surprised Cinebench runs. I must have a very, very good 2600. Like that's that's awesome. So if we check it out, we see uh, you know down here temperatures weren't bad. Uh, none of the temperatures, uh, you know, the sensors there are bad either. So not really uh, that big a deal. Um, I do notice that in you know the VRM, the you know it's supposed to be an eight phase. And, you know, but this hybrid, it's even on the box. If you look right over here, it's like a hybrid technology, eight plus three hybrid digital PWM design. Uh, we know for a fact it's actually like a four that's doubled, which, you know, isn't great, but it's not terribly bad. You know, and there's heat sinks on here. They're nowhere near as good as the heat sinks on my uh, Ultra Gaming on my Ryzen back here that have like heat pipes and stuff. But there's some aluminum with some surface area, sort of, you know, doing some stuff. So what's the problem then? Well, we're going to save that. The problem in lies at 4.3 gigahertz at 1.36 volts that as soon as I go and run the FPU stress test, uh, you'll see. I even had an issue with it the last time we run it and uh, well, she doesn't survive. We'll be very lucky if it lasts even a minute uh, running the stress test. So we see here, it, oh yeah, it's locked up already. 77 degrees on the CPU pack. That's not hot for Ryzen. I would be very concerned if it was over 80. 77 is uh, you know not bad at all. So we're locked up. We can't run the stress test. It's not a stable overclock. And I know if I could put the voltage to 1.4, we could stay here all day long. And the temperatures probably wouldn't be an issue. So what is the issue then? Well, we're going to load up into the BIOS and I will show you. Okay, so load her up into BIOS here. Clickety click. So advanced frequency settings. This looks very much like my Ultra ARS gaming behind me, the X470 motherboard. Uh, you, know, like the, you know, it looks very, very similar until you, know, you go in here. No BCLK. So there's no, uh, you know, tweaking your overclock at all. You know, no, you know, no problem. Okay. Also, the memory, uh, this 4266 kit, I can usually push north of 3600 megahertz uh, on Ryzen with, you know, most boards I've tried that were a little bit more high end. Uh, even the Gigabyte ITX uh, B350 board had more options in the BIOS and would accept a 36. 100 speed overclock with CL19 timing. So I can't push the memory quite as high as uh, normal in this. And uh, you know, 3400 is still fast, but with the timings at CL19, that's not great. And then we go into memory, lots of settings for the memory. So we could tweak that CL down, maybe get this kit of memory running even faster, but that's not why I'm here today. I'm here to show you the motherboard. Well, voltage is missing a whole lot of stuff in it, isn't it? It's got three settings. No load line calibration, you know, no uh, tweaking every little thing. You have an offset for the V-Core, an offset for the dynamic V-Core SOC, and your memory voltage. And that is it, which is very unfortunate. And it wouldn't be as unfortunate if I could push this any higher. It only goes, see, it goes down, but not up. 0 0.204 volts is all you can offset. Which is weird, because does that mean that if I'm hitting that the uh, stock voltage for Ryzen is like 1.15, uh, I guess? Anyways, so it'll go up to 1.36, and that is it, and you're done. So I would say the high stable overclock I got to was three point or 4.2 gigahertz, 4.2. I tried messing with, you can actually uh, change the uh, SOC voltage even higher, oh, up to 0.3 which is really weird because you wouldn't want to put it that high. I got it set to 1.5 and it's just fine. But unfortunately, uh, this is the settings I would probably come up with. I'd go up to advanced frequency settings, put this down to 4.2, maybe we'll, so we'll try 4. Point, yeah, 4.2.5. And you know, that's, that's gonna be the maximum. And if you could push that voltage any higher, I think the motherboard would handle it. I think the VRM would handle it. The chip obviously would handle it. It's a limitation set by Gigabyte very consciously to make it so this motherboard at this price point, uh, you know, is going to uh, not 
cannibalize their higher end boards because it's a very nice board. It looks very high end. It's much better than the Aorus B350s from you know from the last gen, and it's got a lot of stuff on it. It's got RGB control. It's got all that good stuff. But unfortunately, that's just going to be the way the cookie crumbles. So well, Windows is loading up. Let's switch over to here, and I'll show you their website. Very nice board. No compromises. It's funny that they say that, eh? Well. There's a little bit of compromises, unfortunately. That's just the way she's going to blow. But uh, that, that's fine because I think most people would be happy with 4.2 gigahertz on the Ryzen 2600. And especially at 1.36 volts. That's, that's awesome. You don't need as good a cooler. You definitely don't need this crazy AIO uh, because, you know, you, you can get up another 10 degrees and put a nice air cooler on it and it should be fine. So it's got two M.2 slots, which is really nice. It's got a hybrid digital power. Yeah. Well, they, they don't list on the website anymore what the phases are, do they? <laughs> it's got dual NVMe, it's got this and then the other thing. It's got Wi-Fi built in, which is really nice. USB-C, no lag, just frag internet well, through, your, uh, through your network card. It's got that nice built in AIO, or the AIO, the AIO shield, I should say. Lots of RGB stuff on this. So if you want to make a pretty build, there's lights on the board. I made them blue. Uh, you can change that around. But... Uh, you know, if we go back and we look at the, you know, the specs, here's the specs. Well, you know, pretty much they kind of hide the power delivery and stuff in here. I was looking pretty hard for it and I had to do some research and kind of figure out why the box says eight and a lot of people were saying four. So what's the cost? $119.99. Pretty good deal. Very good deal. Very, very good. Yeah, this is a very, very nice motherboard loaded with features. And as long as you're not a very power hungry overclocker, you know, or you're not looking to get 4.2 gigahertz uh, on your eight core Ryzen, this is a very, very nice board. And it would complement all the Ryzen line. I think it would be fine for the 1600, a 1500X, you know, and below. It would be fine for the APU. Very good for the APU because you have HDMI out on it. You have DVI out on it. It's kind of nice. But... When it's all said and done, it does not overclock that great, and that is a huge Debbie Downer for me, you know, because I like overclocking. And, you know, it's got m some options in there, but it's missing some, that is for sure. So let's switch back, and we'll just make sure that we can run the FPU stress test with the uh, with 4.2 gigahertz at that same settings, and then we'll get out of here. We'll go for lunch. We'll have a good day. Uh, I would say I really like this motherboard, and if it had a little bit more voltage control, I would very, very much recommend this motherboard. I'd recommend it if you are, uh, you know, not the overclocking type. Maybe you just want to hit 4.2 gigahertz, set it, and forget it, or you're buying the 2600X, which is going to XFR much higher. But I'm pretty sure, and I even put the fan on this thing, uh, you know, the crazy fan. It wasn't helping that FPU stress test of 4.3 gigahertz. And I think this will be, I actually already ran it and I know it'll be fine at 4.2 gigahertz. So this motherboard will limit your overclocks, but it's a B350, it's 120 bucks, and it's got all the bells and whistles, other lacking a few USB ports over the X470 chipset. It's got the two, uh, you know, NVMe slots. It's got lots going on for it. It's got crossfire support, if that's your thing. It's... It's not bad at all, and for the amount of like extras, like the RGB lights on it, the RGB controls with the little headers and all that stuff, I think you'll have a pretty good time. USB-C, as long as you're not looking to severely overclock. So we're definitely staying, you know, up and running here. I, I know it'll run for like 10 minutes at 4.2 gigahertz at 1.36 volts. So that ain't no problem. That ain't no thing. So I'm at Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. I really do like this motherboard. I love Gigabyte motherboards, but they've basically neutered the damn thing and then put a big sign on their website that says no compromises. <laughs> There's a compromise on here. It's voltage control. But I, I think you'd really like it if that's your price point for a motherboard because, you know, upping to the X470 versions, you're spending another, what, 50 bucks at least? And, uh, you know, the, if you go with a X370, you're going to lack some of those extra features like store MI and stuff like that. So I'll leave it up to you. For a B450 motherboard, this is probably one of the better ones, but I guarantee you I could find one in terms of overclocking that would do better on this chip. And that's the way the cookie crumbles. So 
Titty Joe, follow me and all that stuff. We've got lots of content coming down the pipeline. B450, we're going to have a GTX 1060 review finally. Haven't looked at one of those in a while. We've got uh, some stuff to review, uh, some RGB things and some things and stuff. So thanks very much for watching. And I love all y'all. Have a good day. And uh, AORS Pro Wi-Fi, if you're looking for a motherboard with features and Wi-Fi but don't care about overclocking, pick it up. It's fine. If you just want to overclock a little bit, sure. But know that 2700X is not going to like this motherboard. I'll see you guys later.